You can make peace with anything when Jesus is on your side. The hardest things that we will ever face in our life, we can make peace with them when Jesus Christ is in our heart and we let him control our life. We can lay down with the, with the lion and sleep right beside it if we have Jesus in our heart. You say, well, you're crazy. I wouldn't like to lay down with that lion. Well, if you had Jesus in your heart, you could. You say, well, he might eat me. Well, there's two things that's going to happen if you have Jesus in your heart to that, if, if, during that situation. Number one, if he ain't most of you, he's going to get in the chest. <laughs> and the second thing is if he hates you, you're going to be in heaven with Christ. So what better thing could, could happen? You could lay down with the lie and no matter what happens, everything is going to be okay. That peace is letting Jesus rule your life. That peace is laying all of your cares at his feet and letting him take care of you. Only those who are justified by faith in Christ possess everlasting peace. Peace comes to us sometimes. Sometimes we can sit down and uh, I went in the living room the one night and was going to watch uh, television and I sat down in, in the chair again and what a recliner. Judy brought me out for the recliner. And, uh, but uh, I sat down in that chair and, and began to watch that program and, and the next thing I knew it was over with. <laughs> uh, they, were, they were running the, the credits at the end of the show. I'd slept through that, that program. I, I found peace for a moment. But when I woke up, the problems of the world were still there. Jesus can take away those problems because we are justified by faith in Christ. Peace doesn't come from just saying you have Christ. It comes from being justified by faith in Jesus Christ. And what does that mean? That means that you have, have made a decision to surrender your life wholly to Christ. Not part, but wholly. Everything that you have. Isaiah 48 22 says, There is no peace, says the Lord. And look at that. Is, is it up there? Look what it says. For who? The wicked. Now, if you're a wicked person, there's no peace for you. There is no peace for the wicked. <coughs> you ever thought you got away with something and years later it came back and ditched you? Uh, Oh yeah. Oh yeah. You think there's no peace for the wicked. When we do something that, that's wrong, it will eventually come back and visit us. If not bite us pretty hard. And that's because there is no peace for the wicked. But there is peace for those that love Christ. We need to understand if we're going to be a peacemaker, what it takes to be a peacemaker. We need to understand that role. Because Betty brought it out a, a pretty well the other night. The peacemaker is not just someone that's peaceable. It's not someone that's just a peace lover. It's not even someone that's just a peacekeeper. You can be all of those things and still not have peace. I read a little word that in history there have been a lot of people that love peace that actually were supporters of war. Now that's kind of a rocky road there. It is. To say you love peace and yet you make war. The true peacemaker is not just a, a peaceable person or a lover of peace. A true peacemaker is someone that's active and has a positive force in the church, in the community, in the world. Do your friends influence you? The answer is yes, they do. 
If you ever went into work on a on a Monday morning and you were all upbeat, you know that's pretty rare on Monday. <laughs> we have a guy at work that just doesn't do Mondays. <laughs> but you go into work on a Monday morning and you're feeling upbeat and everything just went right over the weekend and, and there you're you're all all settled and peaceable. And then all of a sudden a co-worker comes in and man, they're just down on everything. They they hate everybody. They they're ready to, to go to battle and, and in a few minutes, you're ready to go to battle too, aren't you? We're influenced by our co-workers and we're influenced by the world. The world has a, a plays a, a great part in influencing us. But the peacemaker is one that has an active role and, and is positive. <coughs> positive people need to be in God's church. Every one of you that know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior this morning sitting in this room should have a positive attitude about your life, about the life of the church, and about the, the, the great uh, opportunity that we have in Jesus Christ. You say, well, why? Why not? You've been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. The problems of the world are not yours. You let Jesus have them, or supposedly you have. And you're working somewhere else. You're working on a higher, higher plane. You're working for a higher cause. But there's one other problem with this. The reason that there are not many peacemakers in our world is this. Listen to what I have to say. If a person is going to be a peacemaker, he first has to make peace with himself. You have to make peace with yourself. <coughs> and I would ask you to raise your hand, but I'm not that dumb. I'm not going to ask you. <laughs> because most of us have never made peace with ourselves. You ever go beat yourself up? Look, look here, this is what Judy did to me this morning. You don't see that? <coughs> have you ever beat yourself up? Yes, you have. Something's happened in your life and you just sit there and you just beat yourself up. You have to make peace with yourself. Until you can say this. You have a peace with yourself. It is what it is. I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. Until you can truthfully passionately, excitedly say those words, you've never made peace with yourself. Folks, Christ makes us a peacemaker. Now, the peacemaker goes on if he has that, that attitude that that I live, yet not I, but Christ lives in me. The peacemaker can make peace with others. And the peacemaker goes out and, and finds creative ways. I think we came to the conclusion the other night in our, as, as a peacemaker. To be a peacemaker, you wind up giving up something. Don't you? Jim and I can sit here and we can fight over something. And he can think he's right. I can think that I'm right. I can be hard-headed. He can be hard-headed. And until we decide, or until one of us decides, 
that we're going to give up something, there will never be peace. Now, 